Welcome to our Easter Sunday Mass. If you're not a religious person and don't usually go to church, we're especially glad that you're here because you're why we're here. We aim to be a church where anybody can come and be a part of our community. So welcome. Now, if you are a guest, I know what you're already thinking. How long is this gonna, I gonna talk for? <laughs> But don't worry, I'm not going to talk too long. And you can hear the regulars already saying, don't believe him. (laughs) But it's true. I, I just want to share a few thoughts with you on this holiday that we're celebrating. A few thoughts, starting with this thought. Most of the time in life is ordinary time. And ordinarily, things in our life are headed in a usual direction, which is generally the right direction. Maybe we need a little adjustment here or there, a a few tweaks from time to time, the occasional course correction or two. But they're generally headed in the right direction. And then there are other times where they're not, when we can be headed in the wrong direction, maybe a really wrong direction as in totally wrong, when things are so out of whack that we need a total overhaul and a clean slate. We need a reset. And that can be difficult. It could be dramatic, impressive, and even life-changing. Sometimes a reset can mean just a change in our thinking because we're thinking one way about a problem or a person, or maybe it's a problem person, And then something happens, something changes, something's different than before, and we have a reset. Sometimes we do a reset when it comes to our behaviors. For example, you're carrying a lot of debt, and you suddenly stop spending, and you get yourself out of debt. Sometimes it's a reversal in fortunes. A lot of movies and stories are about reversal in fortunes, everything from Cinderella to Rocky. Sometimes it's a reset in lifestyle. And the most common cause? Babies. Almost nothing else has more of a reset effect on a couple's life than the birth of their first child. Resets are always interesting. But often they can come as a surprise. And that's Easter. Easter celebrates belief in Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead. Christians believe that three days after Jesus was brutally killed, he rose from the dead. Easter is perhaps the biggest reset in all of history. To better understand that, we're going to look at a passage from the book of the Bible that is called the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles were Jesus' first friends and followers, and Acts tells the story of, you guessed it, their Acts. It tells us what happened on that first Easter Sunday and the time that followed. The passage we're looking at is a speech given by one of the apostles, a man named Peter. So the book of Acts tells us, Peter began to speak. You know the message that spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. So Judea, Galilee, and Nazareth are all in Israel, where Jesus lived and where he worked. If you lived in that area of the world in the first century, You knew about Jesus. You couldn't have not heard about him. Wherever Jesus went, he made waves, he he made noise, he made news. He attracted huge crowds. People wanted to be around him and listen to him. People who were nothing like him, liked him. And Peter tells us why. He went about doing good and healed all who were oppressed by the devil. He brought good out of evil. He won freedom for those who were enslaved. He gave sight to the blind. 
In other words, he effected change and new life and resets everywhere he went. He makes all things new. That's what he did, and that's what he still does. Whoever you are, whatever your story is, that's what he can do. He can hit the reset button and turn your stuff around. Maybe you're enslaved to an addiction or to a bad habit. He has the power to free you from that enslavement. Maybe your job feels like a dead end, or you don't even have a job, or a dead end job would be a giant step forward for you. You can't see what's ahead, but he has the power to bring clarity to your vision for the future. Maybe you're in pain, or you can't find a way forward in a hurting relationship. Well, he has the power to bring healing to your hurting heart. He can hit the reset button on all your stuff. That's what he did, and that's what he's still doing. Peter goes on to say, we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. The they that Peter refers to are the religious and the political authorities of the time. See, they were jealous of Jesus' popularity. They felt threatened by his new approach to God. They were annoyed and appalled by his openness to people who were different, to people who were not all that religious. And most of all, they were furious at Jesus' consistent challenge to them and their system. So they killed him. But God hits the reset button. He reverses the situation. And three days later, death becomes life. Failure becomes triumph. Defeat becomes victory. The main point of Christianity is not about religious practices and rules and traditions. The main point of our religion is not about religion. It's about an event. It's about the reset that Jesus did on earth. See, death is a problem. Death is the biggest problem of all. We don't like to talk about it, we don't like to think about it, but it looms large nevertheless. And even with all of the advances in medical science today, the mortality rate is still hovering at about 100%. And maybe you think that that's life and that's all that there is, and I can respect your view because I can respect you. But still it strikes me as sad and frankly quite oppressive. I mean, if death brings finality, then life just brings futility. And something in us, really, everything in us wants more than just this. Peter here says that there is more. Death does not have the last word. There is more. Jesus rose from the dead, and he promises that we can too. Jesus hit the reset. That's what he did, and that's what he does. Peter goes on to say, he commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God to judge the living and the dead. So Peter tells us that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is the judge of the living and the dead. Now what does that mean? Well, here's the reality that the Bible teaches. Death is not the end. This life is not all that there is. But it's not just life, death, and then more life. It's not that simple. Peter says there is a judgment and that Jesus 
is the judge. You need the judgment. That's key. Because our life now is incompatible with life in God. Our life is so scarred and sin-stained. God is so holy. And we are such unholy messes sometimes that there needs to be a reconciliation, a recalibration, which the Bible calls judgment. Which might be unfortunate because we don't really like that word, do we? We don't like that word because we know the feeling. Like being summoned to the principal's office or being called out before your parents or your boss or an unhappy client or seeing those flashing lights in the rearview mirror just before you're being pulled over. We all know what it feels like to be judged, me included. Perhaps because we've done something definitely wrong that we're definitely not proud of. But then again, perhaps you're judged for something that's not wrong or not even entirely up to you. Sometimes you're judged because you're different. Because you think differently or you do things differently. Maybe you're judged because you don't make as much money as the other guys in your neighborhood and you can't buy your kids what they can buy their kids. Maybe you're judged because you struggle. You struggle with your weight. You struggle in school. You struggle in sports. You're struggling in your marriage or in your relationships. Maybe you're judged because you're gay. It comes from all sides. You're judged by neighbors, by demanding customers, by your own family, and by other moms at your kid's school. You aren't paranoid if you think you're being judged. Because you are. All the time. And so am I. But Christians believe there's only one judgment that matters. And lucky for us, God doesn't judge us on us. He doesn't judge us by our merits, by our actions, or what we've done, or what we didn't do. God judges us in Christ. Peter says, everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Now take a closer look at that passage, because it's easy to miss. Peter says, everyone. That means everyone. Every single person. Before I said that Jesus' resurrection was the biggest reset in all of history. But there's another big reset too. The one that he can work for you. In Christ, we can do a reset from guilty to innocent, from lost to saved, from death to life. Maybe you don't believe there's really a judgment, and that's fine. You don't have to. But I do want to make sure that you understand one thing about Christianity. Christianity is not about being good enough or being holy enough or religious enough, or any other kind of enough that you can think of. None of us as Christians believe we're good enough, or we're going to live with God forever based on our good job performance. Christianity is not about our job performance. It isn't about what we've done for God, but about what God has done for us. Today, I invite you to hit the reset button in your life. In just a minute, we're going to do something that is a very ancient Christian tradition that is associated with Easter Sunday. I'm going to invite anyone who wants to, and please don't feel like you have to. 
but I'm going to invite everyone who wants to stand and renew the promises of faith that were made at your baptism. If you've never been baptized, you can just stand up and make this profession of faith for the very first time with us here today. And then, to drive this point home, I'm going to do my best to get you wet. <laughs> by sprinkling you with the water of baptism. It's just a symbol of a fresh start, of the reset that we can make in Christ. You know, it really all comes down to this. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? And do you want to be judged by God in Christ and on his merits? That kind of faith can change your life.